Here's a question. Does an apple a day really keep the doctor away? I actually think so, but maybe not for the reasons that you think, although it definitely is good for you. So clearly the last few days I've been talking about things like high stress, dealing with your inner critic, um, you know, making sure that uh, you take care of yourself when you uh, hit the wall. And so all these things have made me think and look in that mirror a little bit longer and a little bit harder and recognize that probably some other things besides just like taking some time off need to change. So here's what's motivating me today. I started thinking about the good habits that always keep me in line. And one of them used to be <laughs> eating an apple a day every day at two o'clock. See, I had this um, pattern that I would have a healthy snack at 10 and a healthy snack at two. And it, my healthy snack at 10 was a protein of some sort, usually nuts, you know, walnuts, almonds, you name it. And usually in the afternoon, it's apples. And I was at the grocery store yesterday and I got myself a couple of apples and I was like, where have my apples been? And some of you who watch this every day are going, well, Michael, you talk about having a two o'clock ice cream break. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> it's time to replace the two o'clock ice cream break with the apple again. So when I look back at the times that I'm most effective, that I handle stress the best, where I feel the best about myself and I accomplish the most, it's when I have a lot of things of, in alignment. And so what does that mean for you, Michael? Well, I made my little list. So first of all, eating right, sleeping the right amount, exercising appropriately. And for me, mine includes meditation and journaling. So um, I'm actually great right now at the journaling because especially when I write for morning meditation, I basically write it all out. You know, what I'm thinking, what things are going through my thought, you know, my mind, trying to organize it in a way that I can tell a compelling story. So I've got that going on for me. But when I look at the other elements of eating right, sleeping enough, exercising enough, and meditation, Michael has not been a really good girl. So let's talk about what that means. Now for me, I, you've heard me talk, I know before, about my gold star year. And I'm actually gonna start a challenge tomorrow about the gold star year because I'm gonna start it again. And I'm a little, uh, I'm actually almost close to the first time I did it because the first time I did it for an entire year, it was like October 5th, I think 2017. <laughs> and I did it for a whole year. I've got all but 17 days where I hit a gold star and I gave myself literally a gold star, literally on my calendar every time I meditated, exercised for at least 30 minutes and journaled. And I know that's because those things are right. But I also know that there's other things that I've let get out, out kilt, a little out of kilter. I can't even talk. A little out of kilter um, the last couple months as I've gotten busier. And those are bad habits that I can slip into. And I want to be very conscientious of, of changing them. So I thought I'd talk about, you know, what all these, let's see, what are we talking about? One, two, three, four, five. So five things. What all these five things mean for me when they are in balance. And now, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to say that I am going to be perfect at what we're doing, but I'm going to make sure that I am, you know, looking specifically about what I know I need to keep my body functioning well and my mind functioning well. And that is what I'm going to start making a priority again. I'm actually starting today, but I think I thought this would be a good setup. And I'm gonna put a special place in the app for this called the Gold Star Challenge. And so if you wanna be a part of it more than just even the morning motivation, I'm gonna add some other things and we're gonna start it tomorrow. Um, and I'm very, very excited about it. So let me talk about what eating right means for me. So everybody has a different way that they eat to fuel their body. Some people are vegan, some people are vegetarian, some people are, you know, uh, Atkins, you know, high protein, um, even high fat kind of things. And really, you know, I'm not here to tell you which one's the best for you. You have to know what is the best for you by what your body tells you and how your, what your mind tells you, how you react to what you eat. But I do know that over the years, and I referenced this a couple months or about a month ago in uh, one of my morning meditations, or maybe it was a, you know, weekly live broadcast where I talked a little bit about a mental health check-in and making sure I'm continuing to check in with myself. And I know from experience that what I need to have to fuel my body the, the right way is a lot of high protein and um, I need to have a lot of leafy greens, which has not always been an easy thing for me to do. 
a nice balance between uh, certain kinds of fats but not others. Um, and a lot of this, especially the protein, is really important to me because it helps control my mood. And I have been very successful um, with controlling the up and downs of depression through protein. That's just me. But I don't know what goes for you. But I know that, uh, oh, and one other thing in terms of my body is fiber, you know. So the, the whole, you know, goal of eating the giant apple every day, I mean, there is your fiber too. So it's all the things that keep your body moving. But I have, I have really taken a lot of time in my life to analyze this. And I know when I screw up. I know when, I, it's not that I can't ever have, you know, a donut. Actually, I can't have a donut. Donuts are not good for me. <laughs> they spike my sugar. And then I, I love donuts, love donuts. I probably shouldn't eat candy either, but I find a way to work that in. But it doesn't mean I can't ever, you know, have a greasy hamburger or tater tots, because I love those. Um, but it's about moderation and making sure that you eat more things that are good for you over time than things that you know are not helping your body to function. And it's not just for weight, although, you know, that's an important factor, but it's about how you feel, what gives you good energy. So um, those are things that are important to me. Sleep. Now for me, sleep is really, really critical. I am not a person who can deal without sleep uh, and I need eight to eight and a half hours a night. I know there's some people that can get by on five and some people who need 10 and whatever, but I've known that for a long time that my sweet spot is eight to eight and a half hours. And it depends on how well I sleep, whether it needs to be more eight and a half versus eight, but that's really important. And if I look back in the last three weeks, I can't tell you except for last night, <laughs> the last time I got more than eight hours of sleep. I've had a lot where I'm around six. So those things start to wear me down. So. Again, looking at the patterns, you know, how do we keep ourselves at the top of our game? That's really important for all of us. Your number will be different. The number of hours of sleep that you need is going to be definitely dependent on you, but I want you to track it. So exercising, okay, fair enough. I keep saying I'm getting back into running. We went running last week two times, but I used to go three and do other things in between. So I've totally been slacking. I'm like completely slacking. I started doing pull-ups again then I gave it up. So starting today, actually, I'm not gonna just start it tomorrow, I'm gonna start it today. I'm gonna prep so that tomorrow I'm really back in the mode that every day there's at least 30 minutes of activity of some kind. Um, not every day is gonna be a hard exercise, that 30 minutes might be a walk. Um, but those things are important and I have let them slide. So it's again how all these things kind of work together. So the final two for me, as I said, is meditation and journaling. My meditation, or my journaling I've got down. I do this uh, every day. I'm always writing in this notebook as you guys have seen me talk about before. Uh, but meditation, I got a little off. And um, it's time for me to get back to doing that every single day. And that is important for you know my psyche and keeping you know my motivation up. So it's a long way to say that an apple a day really is <laughs> important, meaning those things that you know are good habits and every single one of us will fall off track. Now you might be also saying, and sometimes my uh, husband will remind me, you know, you can't change everything at once, but actually you can. It just depends on whether or not you're focused and you hold yourself accountable. And I think accountability is the key. And that's why I wanted to start this challenge again with the gold star year so that, you know, we are together working on these things and so that, you know, you can see what I do right. I will tell you when I miss something. I will tell you when I'm wrong with it because I think it's important that we don't just try to um, make it all rosy and it's all great. There's reality, some days you just don't wanna go run, some days you just don't, some days you just wanna eat that piece of pizza, um, which I did last night. <laughs> but ultimately, I want us to all realize that in order to shock our own potential, we have to take steps that are positive and proactive. And it's a lot easier when we do it together. So um, I hope you join me from here on out and grab an apple and remember, every little bit of shocking your potential just takes one bite at a time.